Our backgrounds and our, our stages, our settings, mattered to us in ways that, that we don't recognize, that are actually pretty powerful. Humans, like other animals, need a certain kind of habitat in order to thrive. The great E.O. Wilson has this quote, which sort of captures an enormous body of research, saying that organisms housed in unfit habitats undergo social, psychological, and physical breakdown. And I thought, huh, I wonder if E.O. Wilson's triad is true for humans. Maybe the greenery around in our cities is not just, as they say, the parsley around the pig. Maybe it's actually important that it be there and that when you have greenery in cities, including the poorest parts of cities, it means that the people living there will actually do better, they'll function better. To revert to geek speak, I choose independent variables that we can easily and inexpensively control. I pick things that are easy to change and I see if they have impacts on things that are really important to achieve, like low crime and less aggression, less violence, or reducing ADHD symptoms, or improving kids' ability to achieve and reach their potential. It's kind of stealth do-gooding. <laughs> It's been better than I could ever have imagined to see the impacts that our findings are having. The federal government in the U.S. has actually adopted a series of recommendations for how to landscape public lands, and this has been adopted for all public lands in the U.S. So one study I'm looking at right now involves working with Kaiser Permanente's enormous database of their patients. They are working with us to look at the relationship between the greenness around people's homes and use that to predict health care expenditures. If there's something fairly simple, fairly universal, and fairly inexpensive that can be done to improve health care expenditures, that has really exciting implications. I think the way this relates to modern day living is that a lot of us spend a lot of time in mild fight or flight mode. Our bodies are really very smart about how they invest resources at any given moment. When you have a sense of threat, then we don't invest in long-term projects because, you know, we <laughs> if we don't get away from that lion, there's not gonna be any long-term projects. We carry this low-level uproar in our sympathetic nervous system through the day with very few true moments or periods of respite. I think that's why everyday nature is so important. Evolution wires us, ultimately, to, to respond to the things that are good for us. We can give our all to something that we believe is of value, just in the hope that it'll make a difference. If it does make a difference, that's fantastic, but it's worth the possibility of things being better for me to, to put everything I have into this.